Now, Olga Kevalos had an eventful life. She worked on barges during the Second World War, became an international motocross champion, retired to run a pub, and took part in the TV quiz Mastermind. Olga grew up in the Birmingham suburb of Edgbaston. She had an academic bent studying metallurgy and developing an interest in astronomy. After the war, she went to Paris to study French medieval history. But it was her wartime experiences and her motorcycling exploits that fascinated the regulars at the Three Tons in King Sutton, which she ran with her brother Ray. One of her friends, and a member of her pub quiz team in the village, was David Britson. He says Olga was part of a group known as the Idle Women, during the war. The idle women were the volunteer uh, women who manned the barges on the Grand Union Canal primarily during the war. I think they started advertising for, for women to go on the barges in 1943. Olga answered an ad in the Times in, uh, at some point in 1943 because she was desperately bored by the office work that she was doing at that time. You tied the boat tight into the chute, then they wound up the shutters and all of a sudden you had about 30 tonne of nutty slack come bang mm -hmm. down into the hold. It was up to you to trim it. We had to get shovels and shovel it from one side to the other until the boat was riding, you know, in a balanced fashion. Mm -hmm. It was a, a kind of freedom that some of us might never have known until we'd got married. Far from being idle women, they worked incredibly hard, didn't they? Well, that's right. It was the uh, the born and bred canal people that referred to them as idle women. Uh, I'm, I'm sure most people who know the story will know that uh, the, the trainees wore an IW lapel badge that stood for inland waterways, but uh, the ordinary canal people um, <laughs> took that to, uh, to stand for idle women. And uh, yes, they did work incredibly hard. I mean, according to Olga, the, they worked anything from 18 to 20 hours per day and uh, in very rough living conditions and, and always very hungry. Unlike the land girls, for example, they didn't get extra rations. They had to make do with what everybody else got. So, um, you know, they, it, she told me that she was always hungry at that time. Did she actually enjoy the work on the barges, tough though it was and hungry though she was? <laughs> I, I think so. I think she enjoyed the camaraderie. You remember the nice bits and you remember the lovely mm. summer days and we could sit there and play our record as we went along, <laughs> very ostentatiously. <laughs> How did she get involved in motorcycling? One of her boyfriends was a keen motorcycle racer. I think uh, she she was keen to see more of him at the weekend, so she decided to uh, to borrow a, a big bike. Did she talk she, to you about the trials and tribulations of uh, motocross, of, of the <laughs> six-day trial in Scotland or of, of the more international competitions? She was obviously very proud of gaining two gold medals in, in the international six-day trials. So generally, people don't recall just how tough those uh, six-day trials were. The famously macho Steve McQueen was himself at entry in the international six-day trials in 1964, and uh, the biography said that, uh, you know, here was McQueen up against some of the, uh, the toughest riders in the world. This was uh, exactly the, the same mirror that Olga was riding in. She was one of the toughest ri riders in the world. Was she quite I mean, a character? Oh, she was, yes. She had a wicked sense of humour. And she's the kind she, of person she, you'd want on your side in a pub quiz team. Yes, certainly, yes. I mean, she, she was uh, extremely knowledgeable. and um, She had her specialisms, of course, and she had her weaknesses. Her weaknesses tended to be things like soap operas and, and uh, pop music and celebrities. What were her but, strengths? Uh, her strengths were primarily science, geography... And Genghis History Khan. History and uh, certainly Genghis Khan, yes. And Genghis Khan she, was the subject she chose on Mastermind, wasn't it? That's right, yes. Your name, please? Olga Kevalos. Occupation? Licensee. And your specialised subject? Uh, Genghis Khan. Ms Kevalos, you have two minutes on Genghis Khan, starting now. Genghis Khan means Great Khan. What was the meaning of his real name, Temujin? Man of Steel. Correct. How did she do on Mastermind? Uh, I think she got through on that subject and uh, on to the next heat. So. What, what, what do you think was the key to her character? For somebody who's done so many varied things, had so many different aspects of her life, what would you say was, was the centre of her character? Well, for a start, she had uh, a very interesting family. Her father was uh, a Greek financier. 
Her family came from, from the Mani, uh, which is a part of Greece, which is famous for its fighting spirit, and I suppose she evinced that spirit. David Britson on Olga Kevalos, who's died aged 85. This week, you also heard last words on the hymn writer Fred Kahn, the anthropologist Claude Levy Strauss, who was in fact 100 when he died, and the rocket scientist Xian Shushan. Last word was presented by Matthew Bannister and produced by Neil George. The director Ang Lee is Francine Stock's guest on the film programme in just a moment after a word about today's PM programme from Eddie Mayer. Gordon Brown has made a speech about the war in Afghanistan. We'll listen to its key passages and hear from a former Defence Secretary. Also in the programme, investigators try to work out why a US Army major went on the rampage at a base in Texas. We expect a statement from President Obama shortly. And as we approach Remembrance Sunday, PM has commissioned an essay on the subject of remembrance from Professor Jay Winter, an American historian whose work on the First and Second World Wars has won accolades and awards. PM starts at five. Thanks, Eddie. And now here's Francine Stock. With-